Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of A God Shift. I'm your host, Shana Rattler. I'm so thrilled that you're here, but before we get started, I would love if you would do me a favor. So I want you to take a screenshot of wherever it is that you're listening to this episode. And with that screenshot, I want you to do a couple of things. First of all, just post it on your social media, tag us here at A God Shift, and then I just want to hear your biggest aha moment or your biggest takeaway from this episode. And the reason why I do that is because I know that there are so many people that really want to do more to uphold Christian values and everybody just doesn't know where to start. And so the more times that these episodes are shared, the more people can be equipped with the strategies that we talk about on these episodes so that we can all do our part to take a stand. So like always, I'm excited about my guest today. I know her personally. She is just fabulous, fabulous in all caps, and I can't wait to get into this conversation. So I won't bore you with what I think of her. I'll read her bio and then we'll get started. So my guest today is a speaker, a pastor, a life coach, a podcaster. She's a mentor, and she is a best-selling author whose six award-winning books include When a Woman You Love Was Abused, published by Kriegel Publications, When the Woman Abused Was Me, The Freedom Challenge, 60 Days to Unite the Cords That Bind You from Redemption Press, The Freedom Challenge for Men, 60 Days to Unite the Cords That Bind You, and most recently, the number one selling book, The Making of a Brave-Hearted Woman, Courage, Confidence, and Vision in Life, and that one was published by Bold Vision Books. I want to welcome to the show, Don Damon. Thank you, Shana. What a joy to be with you. I've been looking forward to this for a long time now. I have too. You know, you you have your your ideas of like, I know this is who I want to have on the show. And so I've been thinking about some of the people that I know are going to add some, you know, just such breath and breath to the conversations that I've been having in this new season. And so I've really been looking, um, looking forward to yours and, and being excited about having you on here. So you are a brave hearted mentor. So Don, what does it mean to be a brave hearted woman? To be a brave hearted woman? Well, I specifically talk to midlife women, but for all women, especially in this day and age, it is important and takes courage to be authentically who we are, to step out in our identity, in our God-given uniqueness, to discern our purpose, and to stop people-pleasing. It takes courage. It takes bravery to look in the mirror and tell ourselves the truth about ourselves. So bravery encompasses a lot of things for a woman to find your voice, to use your voice, to speak up. But for midlife specifically, there comes a time where we're kind of losing ourselves. Maybe we are in an empty nest or maybe we've had relational changes. I went through a divorce at 46 years old, never saw it coming. And all of a sudden there I am, who am I? I had to reinvent myself, took courage and bravery every day to say, girl, you got this, you can do another day. And so, you know, then menopause hits and wrinkles come and all the things it takes courage to stay the leading lady of your life. Yeah. One of the things that um, many of the people that are listening to the podcast now, especially with this new season that launched at the beginning of the year, I'm speaking specifically to women leaders on how they can uphold Christian values and more importantly, how they can mobilize other women to blaze the same trail. And so for the leaders that are listening to this podcast who really want to impact the world for the glory of God? Like, why is it so important for them specifically to incorporate this bravery and courage and confidence into what it is that they're doing as leaders? You know, God told Joshua when he was getting ready to go into the new land, he said, be strong and courageous. And then he told him again, be strong and very courageous. Yes, That is a quality that leaders need because there are times when you're going to be walking alone you're going to be standing in your truth and you not you're not going to always be popular people won't always agree with you and you have to be willing and ready to say i'm going to go and i'm going to follow god and i'm going to obey the leading of the holy spirit it takes courage to own your truth and say you know what i'm not backing down off of this this is what i believe this is who i am And in leadership, I know specifically as a woman in leader, a woman in leadership, a woman leader 
we have other challenges as well. I remember Shana in, in the leadership that I've been involved in struggling at times. I didn't want to feel like I was the boss up in here. And that, that I will tell you that I didn't want men to tag me as being, you know, this bulldozing woman. Now, if you're a man and you're a strong leader, you get the accolades. If you're a woman and a strong leader, you get labels. Yeah. And so I had to overcome that fear. I'll tell you the truth. And I had to just keep going and say, I'm going to be like Esther for such a time as this. I'm blazing through. What are some of those labels that get put on us when we're really just strong leaders as women? Well, again, bossy. Mm-hmm. We um, were the wearing the pants. Then my husband would take some hits like, well, you know who's in charge in that family because I was a strong leader that um, I, it was my way or the highway. And just some of the things that, you know, maybe it would be you're, you're controlling. Mm-hmm. And I didn't hear all those things personally, but I know some of the women leaders that I've worked with have had those things and felt like, you know, they she was supposed to be intimidated by the men, that she was supposed to find her place and, you know, that we're not teachable, those yeah. kinds of things. And 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 that's a reality. And especially I was I was in the church world. So there was this dynamic of am I supposed to submit to every man or just one man or any man or just God? You know, all the questions. How do I tell if he's the right one to submit to? You know, a number of years ago, Dawn, I read this article and it was talking about when you're a parent of a young girl, how oftentimes there's certain characteristics and traits that you will notice in your young daughter that are really just signs that she's destined to be a leader. However, we end up telling her to sit down, to be quiet, to stop being so bossy, all the labels that you just said. And so it's not just, you know, when we're leading after we've gotten to adulthood, but if we're not careful, we will actually stifle our daughters from being a leader in a way that there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But just like everything else as a child, we don't necessarily know how to properly channel the good things that God has put in us. And so this article was saying, like, if your daughter is demonstrating these traits that you have a tendency to want to tell her that she's being bossy and you want to kind of curb those you know qualities or whatever it's like no she's actually destined to be a leader and here's how you can actually feed that and send her positively into the leadership that she probably was designed to be instead of her feeling like she either has to shrink to fit or that there's something wrong with her or all of the things that if women that experience this at an older age There's a possibility that if their parents and those that are around them would have been equipped with this knowledge at a younger age, maybe they would have, you know, not found themselves in as many situations where they maybe don't lack the confidence and courage, because sometimes we have plenty within us until I was talking to a friend of mine earlier today. And she's like, boy, I thought I was pretty confident, but I just got off the phone with somebody that basically told me that I was never going to be a good speaker and all, you know, all these things. And so, yeah, I can tell you my mind. There are many times where I was tempted to shrink back. And indeed, there are times where I did shrink back if there was an intimidating presence. And I I didn't stand. I didn't use that resilience and and know and own the authority that God had given me. And I abdicated. But that's why when I'm working with women or even myself, I really encourage us to challenge the rules that we've given ourselves. Is it really true that I'm bossy? Or am I a leader in the making? Is it really true that I'm controlling? Or has God given me a plan that I want to implement? Is it really true that I have to have the last word? Or am I clear as a leader on the direction and our marching orders? So, I mean, those are the things. You have to challenge those rules. Culturally, we do shave off those edges of our daughters when... And I've got a granddaughter right now who it is look out world. She's prophetic. She's loud. She's coming through. She's going to rule the world. <laughs> I don't want to see that stifled or squished because, you know, we think, oh, that's culturally not relevant. 
I'm glad that you gave some of the examples that you gave because, you know, the entire premise of all of my platforms is how do we uphold Christian values? And there's going to be times that in your conversation of trying to get someone to see see things a different way or try to get them to see what it is that God really says on a matter that they could be met with that. Like, well, who do you think you are? And you, you know, you, you just think, you think because you're a Christian that you're right and you know all these things. And so I'm glad that you gave some of those very specific examples that can actually come up because the women that are in my camp that are actually taking a stand for things that are under attack and constantly attempted to be eroded, they're going to have to have an extra dose of bravery. They're going to have to have an extra dose of courage. And I love that you talked about Joshua, because when the Lord was giving me, had given me this assignment, I asked my boyfriend, who is like the greatest theologian I've ever met in my entire life, like, what, what scriptures do you think that I should study? Or what books of the Bible do you think that I should study? Because you know, this army of women that I've been called to, to raise up and, and what do you recommend I read like as their leader? And he says, well, Joshua is all about leadership. Read that. And I love that you used the um the the scriptures from the first chapter when the lord tells them to be strong and courageous yes. because when i was doing a deeper study on those particular scriptures i think i was looking in the moody commentary but it was basically saying that in those particular scriptures when the lord was telling joshua to be strong he wasn't talking about a physical strength but he was talking about a strength to stand for something a moral and, strength like, oh, Lord, like, thank you so much for pointing me to this, because that's the whole point of the podcast in this season and the other things that I'm doing is to teach people how to take a stand for something. And I loved how they drew that parallel between strength being what it is, is that you're standing for and not the literal interpretation of we think we have to be strong. And, you know, as women for so long, we're, you know, we're taught that, you know, some people are taught, oh, you've got to just be strong. And then other people are taught you can't be strong. And you know, you're like, well, gosh, darn it, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Am I supposed to have strength? Am I not supposed to have strength? So, so yeah, I just think that this is such a, a great conversation for women leaders to really understand, like, how should I have filtered either some of the things that I have been feeling or some of the things that other people have kind of should it on me? Like, you should do this, you should yes. This is what you are. This is what you aren't. So I love that you're, you're giving that, um, that framework. So and I will, no, go ahead. If just offer this real quick too, that a brave leader and a courageous leader is also willing to listen to good feedback because I'm in my leadership. I did what John Maxwell calls a 360 leadership. And I said to my staff, you are very welcome to speak into my life. I am a collaborator. I'm not a lone ranger. I love working with a team. But at the end of the day, I'm the leader and I have to make decisions. And leadership is all about making decisions. Yes. That's what I did day in and day out. And there was times where I had decision fatigue, like somebody just decide. But it came down to you're the leader. So I needed courage and bravery to be the last woman standing and say, I will make this decision. And, you know, when God talked to Joshua about being courageous, he commanded him to be that. So it is obviously something we have to cultivate, practice, grow and and reach for. We need to say that's a quality I earnestly long for. God, grant me the spirit of bravery. Absolutely. And one of the things that just came to mind when you said that is that this is not reserved for people who have an official leadership title. Some of us are leaders in our homes. We're leaders in our smaller community or group of people. And so I don't want people to hear this and think, oh, well, I don't hold an actual leadership position inside of an organization. So it doesn't really matter how brave and courageous I am. Shoot, just raising kids these days, let alone these adult children, you need a level of bravery and, and courage, you know, just to be able to lead in your home. And so is it safe for me to say, that this level of bravery is something that any woman should embrace, regardless of the level of her leadership. Yes. And, you know, as we go first full circle, as we first started talking, my book and my heart is to encourage women to be brave, to make important changes in their life, to keep growing, to keep reading, to keep stretching, to never say, 
well, this is just how I am and that's it. No, it takes courage to say, I am going to take a chance. I'm going to take a step of faith. I'm going to feel awkward and foolish and crazy, but I'm going to go for it. I'm willing to open my mouth and speak that word or write that book or do that podcast or start that business. We need courage in this day and age, especially. Yeah, that's so good. So Don, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to share some tips and strategies of how we can begin to adopt this level of bravery. We'll be right back. God is commissioning women leaders to uphold Christian values and change the course of history for his glory and to mobilize other women to blaze the same trail. Want to know what type of kingdom leader you are and learn specific strategies to impact change based on your type? Find out by going to kingdomtrailblazerquiz.com right now. All right, welcome back. So hopefully by now everyone has in, embraced the notion of the level of bravery that is needed, especially if we're going to lead in the tough times as Christian. So Don, if for the women that are listening to this, what would be your best tip of how do we begin to become a brave-hearted woman? How do we begin to become? Well, we mentioned it a moment ago. First of all, you said it, bravery and strength is not a physical thing. Mm -hmm. It's not running out in the middle of traffic and holding up your hands and stopping cars. It is the, the moral strength. It is the moral virtue. It is the mental tenacity. And so practicing bravery, there's a couple of things that I practice. One is resilience. Resilience says, I won't quit. I'm not giving up on my dreams. I'm not giving up on my, my plan, my what I feel like God has put in my heart. And resilience also has to do with how quickly we spring back from falling, tripping, or things that don't work out the way we planned. How many know that, you know, a lot of things can go wrong in our beautiful plan, but we're resilient. We don't quit. We get back up. We try again. We reframe. We back up. We think and we go again. The second element, I think, of bravery, too, is truth telling truth telling to myself and truth telling to others. It takes so much courage to do that. It takes a lot of courage. I know one time I looked in the mirror and I had to write myself a letter. I said, dear Dawn, sweetheart, I love you, but you have gained a lot of weight. And it was a time in my life where I had gone on some medication. I had just gotten married. I was super happy. My husband's 6'5". We were eating a lot of ice cream. And guess what? <laughs> it just was the perfect storm. And I just had to tell myself, Girl, be happy, glad for it. Now get yourself together. Yeah. And it could be other things, you know, truth telling to say, I missed it there. I was wrong. I, I acted, I acted poorly there. I didn't, I didn't rise to the character of Jesus just now in that moment. In truth telling to others, truth without compassion is wrong, but compassion without truth is wrong. So I yeah. think that's part of being brave. And then lastly, I would just say part of being brave is also actions, because what is bravery without actions? Yeah. So taking the next step, doing it, even if it's a baby step, you're an author, I'm an author. How overwhelming was it to sit in front of the computer and go, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. But if you can write a sentence, you can write a paragraph, you write a paragraph, you can write a page, you write a page, you can write a chapter. So if we can just break it down into baby steps. Whatever God's called you to, you know, a confused mind won't take action. So get clear on it and just move. Take a small baby step. Be brave. Do it. And be different. Oh, for goodness sakes. Why did God create all of us so differently? Because uniqueness is to be celebrated. It's beautiful. Be you. Yeah. And I love that what you gave is something that everyone can do right now. It's not anything that you have to wait to begin to become brave, to, to become brave. Like every step that she just gave you is something that every single person can start doing as soon as they hear this episode. So Don, before we begin to wrap up, tell us a little bit more about the new book, The Making of a Bravehearted Woman. Oh, I, may I hold it up? Just what well, you can probably see in the background, little shameless <laughs> plug right here. 
And um, I love it because my publisher said the cover has to be bold and splashy, but the umbrella says, come out from underneath that covering. It's okay. Brave the elements, be you, That's shed so the layers, right? So there's a little bit of imagery there. But in the book, I also talk about five fortitudes and the five fortitudes that I'm speaking about, it's the acronym of BRAVE. And these are the five things that I had to muster when I was going through my divorce. And it was a clean slate because I was a pastor and my whole life was wrapped around, you know, my money, my friends, my church, my purpose, everything. And when my husband left me, I lost it all. So I was jobless and childless and husbandless and my dog died and it was just a, it was a bad time. Like a country music song. It was right. It was, I was singing country. And uh, so God gave me these things. I discovered them as I went along and then I organized them for the book, but let me just give them very quickly yeah. as I, as a brand new standing there with needing to be reinvented. It was bravery that number one, the B and brave bold vision without a vision, people perish. So I had to figure out, what do I see for myself? Who am I in the future? Fall in love with the future you and work backwards. Do what you do today because you love her in five years. So a bold vision. The R is real identity. We've already talked about identity. You'll never rise above the level of what you think about yourself. If you have a low self-esteem, you can plan on a low future. So I had to make sure that I was repaired and healed and knew that God loved me and that I had a purpose and that I wasn't damaged goods because now I'm going through life as a divorced woman. I felt like I was a black eye in the body of Christ. And then A, able mindset. An able mindset, fortify that mind. I can go through life being a victim. I can blame. I can point the finger. I was left. I was abused. I was hurt. I was kicked to the curb. Okay. So you can keep that story. You can be really attached and committed to those excuses, or you can take responsibility for your life and say, what now? Okay. Yeah, that happened. So that explains it. Doesn't excuse it. I have, I am well able. I can go up and take this mountain. I can take this promised land. Mm -hmm. We be able, yes. <laughs> as he said, <laughs> he was from the hood. So we be <laughs> able, I can do it. And then, uh, so that's the A, able mindset. And then V, virtuous talk. All right. I had to line my words up with where I wanted to go. What if we said at the end of everything we said, just as I want it. Oh, I look so ugly today, just as I want it. Oh, I'm so broke. I can't pay attention just as I want it. All of a sudden you're like, no, maybe I want to change my words because we're not supposed to be reporting with our words. We're supposed to be prophesying. So yeah. I had to fix my words. And then finally, E is excellent habits and your habits are your future. So what are you doing? Are they working for you to bring you to your goals? Or are they working against you? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the five fortitudes very quickly. And that's what I talk about in the book. So the book has three sections. We talk about brave hearts where they hide and how they rise again, then the five fortitudes of the woman. And then we close with a, developing a plan. Okay, now what? Let's get going. It's yes. go time. I love that you put that in there because I feel like so oftentimes books open you up and tell you what's wrong, but they don't tell you how to do it to fix it. <laughs> you know, it's like, wait right. a minute. Like, yeah. uh, I'm just, I'm gaping here. Now what? <laughs> exactly. Um, Don, where can our listeners find you on social media? So I'm on all the usual suspects, but I do have a link tree that helps you find everything. So that is linktr.ee forward slash Dawn Damon Live. Perfect. And the braveheartedwoman.com. Perfect. And for someone that wants to take things further with you, what would you like to offer them to do? Should they get the book or is there somewhere else they should go? They can certainly buy the book. And I also have a free gift that I'd like to offer them. It's an ebook called Ignite Your Confidence and Soar with Self-Esteem. And that can be found at braveheartedwoman.com forward slash free gift. Perfect. Well, I'm going to make sure that the links to all of that is in the show notes so that all they have to do is click on it. Dawn, thank you so much. You did not disappoint. Not that I thought you would, but everyone share, share, share this episode. And if there happens to be a gentleman that is listening, please share this episode with a woman that you know that could have an extra dose of bravery 
in what it is that God is calling her to do. So Don, thank you so much for being here. Everyone share this episode and I pray that you will consider going back and listening to previous and future episodes as well. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.